Hey everyone, this is Josh from Before, and I'm here with McFarland Toys Warhammer 40k Orc Big Mech. I've had many comments from people trying to sell me on the Warhammer line, and I actually did pick up this Space Marine like on sale. I think I got this for like 12 bucks, and he's super fun, huge, chunky, very uh, Robert Heinlein kind of. Moving forward, if the Warhammer stuff's coming out, if it looks cool, I'll, I'll pick it up and check it out. Because I, I could definitely make space for something like this. Something that looks as cool as this, like, green orc monster guy in a somewhat steampunk-adjacent sort of mechanical murder contraption. I say steampunk because, like, uh, this these um, conductor things that are going to go on his, like, back here kind of give me that vibe. I don't... I don't actually know much about Warhammer, despite the fact that I live in Indianapolis, which is the longtime home of Gen Con, the gaming convention. I do have a lot of friends that are into table gaming. For me, I think it was just um, like as a, I, I could have gotten into it as a kid, but I think the price, you know, the the cost was kind of prohibitive. It probably would have boiled down to like if I wanted to get into table games with figurines and stuff, it probably would have meant I wouldn't have gotten a Sega. So you, go, I hope you understand the uh, the choice I had to make. But now I'm just rambling. Let's take one more look around this box. Very cool designs here. Rad picture of the guy. You see how tall he's gonna be. More cool deech on this this side. And if you're trying to hunt him down, if maybe that'll help you. Let's get him out of here. Okay, first things first this big electricity conductor backpack thing, that's gonna peg onto the back. Like that, let's let's get that in there and then we can drool all over the fun details. All right, there he is, that sits very high. That, that makes him considerably taller once you've got that on there. Man, oh man, this guy's... Just feeling the movements a little, little hint of the movements already. I can tell he's going to be fun to play with. Super cool. Uh, this is awesome. Just tons going on just in the face alone. Like this big metal mask with one cybernetic eye and one little slat. And he's got these bolted on sort of um, little Frankenstein bolts all over him. There's a couple tubes sculpted in there that sh I think should have gotten hit with with some paint. But I really like the, the paint on his skin here. And the sculpted texture of his skin is really fun. And classic monster. There's no shortage of, of like details that you can spot that do need you know could stand to have extra paint on them. Like it's, it's cool that this little plate here is on here and it's painted red and the design on it is white. But like it looks like there's so many other extra pieces, screws and other metal plates to, to kind of to, for so that this could hold its shape and kind of adhere it to the uh to the rest of the contraption and you know wires dangling but no paint more jaw type shape uh embellishments that could have been brought out a little bit it would have been nice it is what it is you know ditto for like the patch on the pants but these pants have this awesome sculpted fabric detail and the, the seams and the, that are stitched together, the patch on there, they, they really like have some strong dimension, you know, give it a little bit of cartooniness to contrast with the realistic fabric texture. I like that kind of stuff. And then like the way that the, these uh, leg gauntlet things have been sculpted, it's like they feel like they're 10 inches of metal, you know, thick. It's cool. It looks really cool. And they've kind of like, you know, they've been, they've been beat up a little bit and misshapen. Nicks and scratches all over them. Man, cool, cool stuff. Love that there's a little bit of dry brush sort of weathering happening on there. It's always good to see. And the, and the checker pattern on this side, I love the asymmetrical details. Ditto for the, uh, even the like, brace things on his sort of exoskeleton legs. Those are slightly different. They're not perfectly symmetrical. I just love that kind of stuff. Ditto for even just these screws here. They got different size shape washers on there. Love that kind of stuff. 
Um, yeah, more great detail that could be brought out by paint on the back here. Little hoses and pipes dangling. It's great. Oh man, now I'm I just I'm just now looking at these arms and I can already see how cool this is gonna be. This definitely has like a piston in it. Uh this is gonna be fun once we start articulating him. Well these little gauges in here on this big hook hand and it's got a kind of drill press thing in the middle. Freaking awesome. And while the other arm is just a huge Gatlin gun, looks very heavy metal, 2000 AD. I'm I'm here for that kind of stuff. So yeah, just taking a look at this guy in three dimensions. You, you can clearly see why I have no qualms about picking up something like this, even though I have no attachment to the source material. And and really, that's, that's just kind of been my, my draw to McFarlane lately in general. Like, I do like, I, you know, if you watch this channel, I, I review mostly DC Multiverse figures, and I really love that line. But it's not even necessarily that I'm a huge DC fan. I'm definitely a big Batman fan, so that my my needs are, are are met, obviously. But I'm not shying away from seeing something that like even though the the license or the connection to the license isn't there for me, I could still see something and be like, yeah, this is awesome. This is badass. I'll make space for this for sure. But let's start moving him around and see what he's all about there. I've I've had to move him a little bit just to get him to to balance on that. Three, for that 360, and I can tell you, moving this guy, getting him into some different poses, it's going to take a little bit of manhandling. Some of the joints are really stiff. It's going to feel like you're like cracking a lobster, kind of. Uh, but that's all right. These things are sturdy, and they can be manhandled, and they're not just like riddled with QC issues where uh, pegs are going to snap and stuff. So really, the thing that bothered me, that is going to bother me more, is that this thing is pretty loose in there. It does not want to stay in there. It's going to, I think, take something else to, to make it really stick. You see the way it's carved out. It just doesn't seem, doesn't, this plug doesn't quite make sense for, I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't think that's great. So I think this head is on a ball joint, but it's either really stiff or doesn't have much clearance or both. It doesn't feel like I'm getting a lot of, you can obviously do this. Yeah, I guess, I guess there's some side to side in there. Maybe once it gets freed up a little bit. Would have loved a moving jaw, moving jaw on this, but I can't have everything, I guess. The torso's got a little bit of, a little bit of crunch. Not really side to side, but he rotates and he's got just a little bit of, maybe not. Yeah, you can actually, this is, cut out right there so if you can get that over that belt buckle and he gives him a little bit of of a lean forward I mean I'll take whatever I can get you know sometimes little micro adjustments like that they actually do add a lot a lot of body language change in the in the pose that you're going for so I'll take whatever I can get I'm you know what I'm taking this I'm taking this off right here. Halfway decent range on this one. This one's a bit stiffer. I think it needs warm water for it to get all the way up there. Rotates there. Rot rotates at the contraption at his wrist, more or less. And then, and when you bend the elbow, the piston, the hydraulic mechanism, it does move. But he didn't even quite get 90 degrees out of that elbow, if you can see that there. And then the claw thing spins. Very, very satisfying movement out of that. And a great detail on it. Love the bolts and the dings and the scratches and the spikes and good stuff. The other arm, not much range again. But it's pretty fun. <laughs> Looks pretty cool. Man, I love that huge clip. It's awesome. Oh, and that's a flamethrower, huh? Yeah, that's awesome. If you want to see a little bit closer how those hydraulic things work, that's on a ball joint. Pretty fun. And now these exo leg things, these are on ball joints too. I, I had to move this one. I had to orient it a little bit differently just to get this knee to bend a little bit more because this was in the way. So 
So there's a lot of variables like in play when you are trying to get the articulation out of it. Just, you know, be aware. Try not to force anything too much because there's so many different connections. But I mean, it's still pretty good leg movement considering he's also con attached to that. I mean, hooray. Really good knee movement. Again, that's got to be moved completely out of the way. Uh, I think it 90 degrees. And then these big ball joints on the ankles are kind of the biggest sort of like break in the illusion, but they do offer this really fantastic range for such big feet. They rotate like that. But you really like getting these legs up and then getting his feet kind of back like he's about to step on, like, like he's about to stomp somebody. You know what I mean? I feel like that's kind of the kind of some of the attitude that you want out of this guy. I will say a, a, the um, knees do also rotate, but because of all this big mechanical contraption gear, it doesn't have much range. So, so it is in there, just, uh, just fairly limited. Here he is next to a couple other McFarlane mega fig scale figures. And uh, you know, Swamp Thing and King Shark, I think next to these guys, he maybe still feels a little diminutive. I know he's got these big chunky proportions and stuff, but still the mega fig price, 40 bucks. I think the value is really there, especially you compare that to something like, you know, well, hey, even the Marvel Legends like Modoc or Surtur, and those are more expensive. And I think frankly, um, ha ha have less appeal for me uh, than something, this cool giant monster mech guy. But given that the, most common figure from this line, the, the Space Marine variant. Um, you know, he's already very, very big. So 20 bucks more for this. It doesn't, it doesn't quite seem like a lot when you put these up next to each other, but but I still think these McFarland figures, on the retail market, they're the best value, the best bang for your buck. But I'll let you decide for yourself. Uh, personally, I'm feeling this with Warhammer line. This is cool stuff, man. I love this mech space marine guy monster this he actually he reminds me of um man warcraft before it was world of warcraft there were some like they were rts style warcraft games single player and uh the orcs they they looked like that guy those games were fun man all right guys appreciate you watching i will see you on the next one bye